Well, it's been a few weeks since I've had a video out, and that's because I haven't been feeling the best. But we're back now, fighting fit, roaring to go. So what are we going to do? Well, over the last wee while, as you know, I've been buying up various systems and done very little with them. So let's start what I'm going to call System Build September. And let's start with this system here. This was the first one that I bought recently. 486DX266. Today we're going to strip it down, take a closer look at what's inside, rebuild it back up again, maybe fire a few extra cards in there. And since Windows 95 recently turned 25 years old, let's turn this into a little Windows 95 rig. Time to get stuck in. So let's have a closer look at the hardware we are dealing with, starting with the motherboard. Check out those white ISA slots. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? Almost a shame to hide them away inside a case. We have four megabytes of RAM on here that I also want to remove. And I'm sure we can do better than that. We do have these two SIM sockets here and I have a big bag of memory modules. So let's see if we can't even get 16 mega RAM in here. I think that would be a nice amount to go with this DX266 processor. Speaking of which, let's take a closer look. The chip in particular then is the IBM Blue Lightning. No boring Intel or AMD chips here. This is an IBM Cerex Blue Lightning DX2 46 66 megahertz, as I said. We're not gonna change the CPU, we're gonna stick with this so I'll not have to worry about any of the jumper settings. Albeit on this UMC motherboard, all our jumper settings are very kindly written along the top of the board here. So if we were to change this in the future, it should be easy enough. So what other cards then do we have to plug in to our motherboard? Well, the first thing you may notice here is a complete lack of IDE or floppy connectors. And for that, we're gonna need one of these. This is PT. 607G Super I.O. card. It gives us our IDE on floppy headers, but it also does serial parallel, and that looks like a game port. We're gonna need some sound from this computer. So for that, I've decided to go with this Crystal sound card. This will just be your Sound Blaster clone, but I have picked this card for a very good reason. It has a Sony CD-ROM interface and you might have noticed on the front of this system was this Sony CD drive. It has the Sony proprietary interface on it. That should go nicely with that card. And then for the most important bit of any computer, the graphics. And since we have Visa local bus slots, Let's make use of those. And this is the card here. S3 EAAJ2. I don't know a whole pile about this card. I'm just super excited to have it because it is Visa Local Bus. There is space here for an extra one megabyte of RAM. There is one meg on this card at the minute. So I'll have a hook to see if I can find a couple of chips to put in there. We'll get this up to two megabytes. Really excited to see what this wee card can do. It obviously is just a 2D card, but with games such as Duke Nukem 3D, I'm wondering will the likes of this wee system have enough horsepower to do it? The other thing we're gonna need to throw in here is a network card, just to make it handier for getting stuff off and on the system. Right, I'm gonna give things a bit of a clean with some substance here on this slot, I'm not sure what it is, but a bit of IPA will take it off. 
I'll give all that a clean, dust out the case a bit, then we can have a think about putting it all back together. Okay, everything's been given a bit of a clean, so let's just put it back together. I have the CPU already back in its socket and replaced the old thermal compound with some of this stuff, MX4 from Arctic. This is meant to be pretty good. We're not going to go with the four megabyte sims that were in here, the four one meg sims that were in here originally. Instead, I had a bit of a hoke and found a matching pair of eight meg Hyundai sims, 72 pin, 16 meg total. That's perfect. Just reconnect up the front panel. And if you're ever doing this sort of thing, take a picture on your phone first of where everything goes. It just makes it a lot easier when you're putting it back together. That one goes to the hard drive LED but that connects to our Super I.O. card, not the motherboard. Okay, just before we do put the motherboard back in place, this tray gets in the way of the drive bays, so let's get the drives in first. The floppy drive and the CD drive, I just give them both a very quick service. Just strip them down, clean the heads and the laser with a bit of IPA, then just lubricated the rails with a bit of lithium grease. For the hard drive then, I've decided to go with this old brick. This is an old Seagate drive, roughly two gigabytes in size. I probably will go with the likes of a CF card or something eventually for this machine, but um, for now I think I'll just go with this period correct Seagate IDE hard drive. Right, I'll put the screws in the other side in a minute. Let's get this motherboard tray back in. It actually is quite a nice case to work in this with a removable motherboard tray. Something you don't see even these days all too often. So the expansion cards then, let's start with the sound card. One odd thing I noticed about this by the way, while giving it a very brief clean, these capacitors look a little bit dodgy. This one in particular, it almost looks as if someone has cut the outer sheath of it away on the top. Why would you ever do that? I don't see any signs of leakage or anything, but um, I'll maybe replace those two at some point. Right, anyway, this Sony CD-ROM interface. Now, I don't have a Sony CD-ROM interface cable, but one thing I do have is a floppy cable and this Sony See the interface. It's the same amount of pins anyway. Let's just hope it's a straight through cable. So the sound card then, I think I'm going to put where we put it. I just want to put it somewhere that the cable isn't going to get in the way of any of the other drives. Maybe put it in that top one there. Put it in that top ISA slot. Shouldn't interfere with anything else up there. I will need to get the digital audio cable. I'll have to have a look for one of those. We'll come back to that in a minute. Right, what's next? Our Super IO card. This beast. So we need a floppy cable on here and 
IDE cable on here. Right, then this mess of cables is going to go in there. Cable management was never really a thing in these old machines, was it? It certainly isn't in this one. Right, graphics. Let's get our S3 Visa Local Bus card back in there. But first, we have space here for an extra one megabyte of RAM. I found this old Cyrus Logic PCI graphics card. It has two meg on it. There's one of them there inside these sockets. Let's try and get those chips out. Then we can put them in there. Now I do have a proper chip puller somewhere, but I'm just not sure where it is at the minute. So I'm just gonna carefully try and get these out with a small screwdriver. This is definitely not the way to do this. Right, so we can put that to the side and then we can just push these in here. Finally! My goodness, they did not want to go in. Right, this one belongs in here. Okay, the other thing I did say we're going to put in is a network card. And I have this, found it lying in the spare parts drawer. An ENET 16 combo network card from 1993. Token ring, whatever that is, and 10 base T, that's what I need. In fact, I've never actually set up a token ring network. Would that be something to do once we're finished with this uh, system build September? Maybe I'll try and set up a token ring network. Never done that before. Could be quite interesting. I don't actually know if this card works or not, so let's just power on the machine like this first of all without this card in and uh, let's see what happens. Then if all is good, we'll stick that network card in later after we get things set up. Okay, let's see what she says. Mmm, that's a strange noise. And a gooey BIOS. Who would have thought we had a gooey BIOS in 1994? And then they disappeared until, what, the last 10, 15 years or so? Right. Date and time. It's not a million miles off. It's got the day, right? Doesn't have the time, though. As it is currently 24 minutes past 5. Floppy drive, 1.44 megabyte, yep. And our hard drive, 2 gigabytes, that's just... Be 100% sure about that. Yeah, that's right. Plenty of features in this BIOS. I'm just going to leave everything as it is. I don't see the point in messing. Right, let's save changes and exit. But what are we going to do for an operating system? Well, I did say we're going to install Windows 95, but I need to install that from CD. And because this is not IDE, the standard Windows 95 boot disk is not going to work. And why is that busy light on? I suppose it probably needs the drivers initialized on the sound card for the drive to work right. That's my guess anyway. So what I'm going to do, just to try and make things easy, is install MS-DOS 6.22 first of all. 
that'll let us set up the system. We can put a network card in, get everything up and running. Then we can install Windows 95. Why is nothing ever simple? So I finally got MS-DOS 6.22 installed. The floppy drive, which I probably should have tested beforehand before taking it apart and cleaning it, was faulty. Oh well. Plenty of spurs, so that's one in there and we're up and running. But we do have another problem. And that is this sound card. I have been hunting for the last hour or so for drivers and I can find nothing, absolutely nothing for that card. So let's use this one instead. This also has the Sony CD-ROM interface. I am almost leaning towards just taking this Sony drive out I'm putting an IDE drive in here. But we'll try this card quickly. I have found the drivers for this. I'm going to install this. I thought we may as well just install this network card as well. So I'll get these in. Try to set up the CD drive and the network. That'll just make it easier for transferring things across. Then we'll have a go at installing Windows 95. So we finally have the Sony CD drive set up and the network card. There's the Sony CD drive going now. But getting the driver for this was near enough impossible to find the right file online. So what I'll do is stick a link to it in the video description down below. Just in case you're trying to set up a Sony CD drive like this. It comes in a nice way executable and just does everything for you. Obviously though, you need the drivers for your sound card first, those installed and configured for the Sony drive. And once you have all that done, it actually is pretty simple to set up. This network card on the other hand, <laughs> this network card, there's nothing simple about that. It took hours, hours to get that working. Supposedly just uses an NE2000 driver. So thought this is gonna be nice and straightforward. Oh no, it wasn't. I had to go hunting for the jumper layout to see the correct configuration for that card and stumbled across a really nice website that has listings of multiple different network cards and all the jumper settings for them. So again, there'll be a link to that in the video description below. If I had had those settings and had had that CD driver, I probably could have had this thing up and running in five minutes. I think in total it probably took me about four hours. Oh well. So everything is working. Let me just show you. We can stick in a music CD. You have to love that manual tray mechanism, don't you? If you go in here, the Sony utility comes with a nice CD play. And you work that by typing CD play, then the drive letter. And then if you want color or monochrome, we'll have color. It asks you to confirm if that's right. How awesome is that? Now the drive's working fine. So for installing Windows 95 then, you know, while I've been working on this machine, I reckon it might be better for Windows 3.1, but we did say we'd install 95, so we'll do that now. I might revisit this in the future and put it down to 3.1, but 95 it is. What I'm going to do is just copy the contents of the Windows 95 CD across to the hard drive on this over the network. And then we can just install direct off that. Okay, that is everything copied across. Well, just the Windows 95 setup folder. Let's get it installed. 
This is going to take a wee while. Just let me get it done and then we'll be back. Well, we're finally there and Windows 95 is installed. This monitor does not get on with the output from this graphics card and has to be adjusted every single time, but whatever. Had a couple of conflicts with the drivers of the sound cards, but well, got around that eventually. And unfortunately, my old hard drive died. What is the odds of that? But there we are. That's what delayed the release of this video. Just stuck another old IDE drive in there for now. But this machine probably would be better suited to a CF card or an SD card. Or maybe even an MSATA, the IDE converter. That might work well in here. So, Windows 95. Let's try a few games. Now, every time I try to run Duke Nukem 3D from within Windows, the machine hangs. We can run it from within DOS though, and we'll maybe finish off with a bit of that later. But what else have we got in here? Well, how about a bit of Transport Tycoon Deluxe? I spent way too much time playing this game. Must have sunk days into this. In fact, I would still play the modern version of it, which is Open TTD. Highly recommend it if you like this at all, and it does expand on this game slightly. So as you can see, there still is a little bit of lag here in scrolling. So this is probably about the limit of this Wii system in terms of games. I mean, it is perfectly playable. Just the scrolling is a little bit on the slow side. Right, anyway, I suppose that's enough of that. Because if we don't, I will be playing this for hours. What else have we got? I wanted to try Screamer. Screamer is a game I played quite a bit on my first actual IBM compatible. That was a Pentium 100 though, not a 486DX266. So I'm interested to know if it can run Screamer. <laughs> Well, I suppose it's running, just not particularly well. Not really sure what I expected here, if I'm being honest. And it's looking for the CD. How about a bit of Theme Park? How's it going to cope with that? I would expect it to run this pretty well. Running pretty well in this lower resolution. What about if we crank it up? So yeah, a little bit laggy. Still a lot better than it was on the Amiga. I remember playing this game on my 1200 and how it's running here now in the high res mode. That's about how it runs on the Amiga in the low res mode. Especially when your park gets quite big. Another awesome game that I could sink way too much time into. But we don't really have the time for that now. Oh. Let's crash the computer while it was Quitting to DOS, has it? Oh dear. That's not a good sight on Windows 95. Right, let's just boot up into DOS mode and that will give us a chance to try out Duke Nukem 3D. Oh 
dear. Slowing down a bit while trying to load the demo. That doesn't seem too bad once it's loaded it. Let's run. Question is though, what is it gonna play like? So it is a little slow. There's definitely no way this machine is going to run it in the higher res modes. Where do you come from? It's not working. Yeah, frames are dropping all over the place. It's nice that it does run, but probably about the limit of what you could do on this wee machine, to be honest. So to finish off today, what I thought I'd do rather than my usual outro, would be to show you a Windows 95 Easter egg. So let me move you a little bit closer to the screen. So what you want to do is create a folder on the desktop and call it. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. Then rename it. We proudly present for your viewing pleasure. And then finally rename it one more time. The Microsoft Windows 95 product team. Exclamation mark. And then if you open that, you get the Windows 95 credits. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the build of this little 486. And if you did, I would appreciate a big thumbs up as it does help the channel. I'll be back next weekend with another system build. So until then, see ya.